<laughs> okay, it's good to be back, and it's time to do art again. As nonsensical and ridiculous, it really is the only word I have to describe life, as nonsensical as ridiculous as life is, we can still meet up every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time to talk about art. This weird craft that we all have to do for some reason or else we'd be unhappy. And why do we do it? So that we can tell stories and we can make pictures and draw what's in our heads. Because there's no camera that can take a picture of what's in our heads. So in case you needed it, needed a reminder of why you draw and why you're here today in this time in history, why you're here watching art get taught. It's because maybe you want to tell a story one day and you want to learn how to draw so that you can tell it well. It can be a story about a portrait, it can be an actual story, but that's why you're here. So, let us talk about this subject. I'm going to cover um, this photo referencing because I, need, I think you guys need a lesson on how to work with a reference. Y'all don't even know what you're doing. And honorable mention for the elemental design. Holy crap, well, how well done is this, you guys? It's phenomenal. It's effing phenomenal. I wish they'd do a character like this for League, and she'd be like this crazy spellcaster, kind of like a mix of Morgana and the otter dragon thing. Um, Aurelian, whatever his name is. <clears throat> Holy wow. Look at the flame color on the outside of the flame and look at the internal color. It just reads heat. She's just on fire. Gestures are amazing. Your disregard for symmetry, but at the same time, how you manage symmetry. Like, holy Moses. Your use of texture. Holy God, this is so good. <laughs> Fabulous work. I am just in awe. It's simple. It's clean. It's simple and clean. And it can be used in a game. I see it being used in a game. This is so fantastic. Absolutely beautiful work. I cannot believe how good this is. Um, really nicely controlled. I would, in, in, like, just because I like lights and sparkly things and I'm a girl, probably a crow, um, I would boost up the sparklies just a little bit more. <laughs> Um, but that's really all that I would do. It's so clean a design. It's so fabulous. I don't know if they would actually do something like this and maybe the leak likes to be a little bit over the top, but holy God, if you use this in your portfolio and you had like seven more of these characters in your portfolio in this format, dude, you'd be getting jobs day in, day out. You would want for nothing ever again. All right, um, let's talk about working with references. But before I do that, I want to send out some announcements. Really important stuff. Portrait Studio is over. <laughs> Slow down, it's the rack. <laughs> Porch. <laughs> Lately, I've been stuttering a lot um, because I've raised my synthroid do dose. Um, so that means that I'm a little bit hyper sometimes in the day after I take it. Um, so I'm stuttering a lot. Um, so I'm sorry about that. I'm thinking faster than I can talk. And, uh, or I'm, I don't know. Uh, so what was I saying? Sale. Porsche Studio sale is over. Um, but it will be up. <laughs> Porsche Studio is canceled. <laughs> oh my god. Um, Porsche Studio sale is over. Porsche Studio is still running, you guys. God forbid anything happens to Porsche Studio. Porsche Studio is still up and running. It's no longer on sale. Um, it will be on sale again. I'm sorry I didn't do a sale for Cyber Monday. Like, that's exactly when the sale ended, around the end of the month. Um, but it'll be on sale again in two weeks. So, on the 15th, Friday the 13th, Jesus, Friday the 13th, the sale will start, and it will run into January, so another month. Only reason I'm not putting it up on sale for this long is just because I'm, I want to promote it. I want to promote the sale for a little while, 
Um, but also for those who want to buy it at full price, I mean, you can go ahead. I mean, why wouldn't you wait for the sale? But <clears throat> I should probably have just kept it running. <laughs> but the sale might start on the 13th or the 20th. It's just for the Christmas season for the New Year's resolution peeps who want to buy Porsche Studio. Um, but towards the end of the month, starting on the 13th, possibly well into the 31st and the 2nd, because you all get your monies from your parents around Christmas for gifties so I might just you know do it on the 20th and run it into half the month in, Jan in January um what else there is a new challenge up on our community um for those who don't want to do the wizard battle um you have a new challenge so let's talk about it mini holiday challenge for anyone not partic participating in the full scale Santa wizard battle lol holiday challenge you get you can get to work on a mini character design challenge. Please design a simple character design lineup of up to five of the classic Christmas reindeer. But as mini elf characters, no furries, K thanks. The elf characters must represent the name of the reindeer you've chosen. So Prancer can be interpreted as a dancing elf of some kind. Feel free to use this idea. What's the twist? There has to be a magical element incorporated into the design somehow. So a prancer elf can have some magical element that helps with the generation of more free open gestures and movement. Seriously, no furries. I will kick you out of the community if you upload a furry. <coughs> Reindeer with like a big crotch, like bulge. Um, these characters must be lined and colored similar to the previous Halloween challenge. Clean, crisp, line art with a... Two to, with two to three shade coloring, so no blending. The magical glows can be added as a gradient. So if a character has a glowing <laughs> crotch bulge, <laughs> you can add it in in a separate layer. Um, <laughs> but no smooth shading with any other shades on the character design. Cell shades only. This challenge shouldn't eat too much of your time because it is very simple execution and delivery. The due date will be Tuesday, December 17th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The Thursday following will be the due date for the Santa Wizard Battle Challenge. So you've got the 17th is the character design for the elves. The 19th is the Wizard Battle. Um, so you guys have, have have a little bit over two weeks. You have exactly two weeks to do the first challenge, the mini holiday challenge. <clears throat> and a little over two weeks left to do the to complete your Wizard Battle. All right, so I want to see tangled up beards. I want to see walkers tossed aside nonchalantly in the in the heat of battle. I want to see canes flying in the air. I want to see I want to see a nebulizer on at least one of them, an oxygen tank on the other. <laughs> We're talking old geezer Santa Claus wizard battle Dumbledore rickety arthritis. <laughs> I want to see long socks. I want to see fatigue, but in the middle of that, I'm just joking. Do whatever you have to do, but um, can't wait to see it. I'm still laughing about this. I don't know why the hell I'm still laughing about it. If you want to support as a patron, you can do so uh, using Patreon. Um, if you join as just a $1 patron, um, and if everybody joins, I wouldn't have to keep uh, requesting patrons. Um, but if you do want to sign up for a higher tier, uh, you get educational material back. Um, so upcoming in the rewards will be my personal process videos and the critique hour for homework from last month and this month, which were linked, um, and uh, brushes, a participation, and challenges sent out monthly in our Discord, our private Discord. So if you guys want to join as apprentices, you may do so. Anything in between the Watcher and Apprentice is just um, in between those rewards. So $10 patrons don't get access to our Discord. But they do get educational material as well. But for $12 a year, you can really keep this community alive if everybody joins. Um, I don't expect 2,000 people to join as $1 patrons, but that's the goal, and hopefully we get halfway there or something like that by maybe March. Okay, and... That's it for announcements, I think. The Portrait Studio sale will come up. There's the challenge, um, the new challenge, and there's Patreon. Okay, let's talk about how you guys paint <clears throat> and why it's bad. All right. Um, any questions at all about 
All right. All right, no questions so far. When you guys do photo reference work, you guys are so mesmerized and amazed and distracted by the friggin' eyes that you completely forget that these eyes are actually the smallest part of the portrait. And though yes, they are the fun they they are the focal point, the fundamental focal point. They're not that important. But how do they work? How do they work? Well, let's talk about the frequencies in your brain, what you think is important, what you think is fundamental. Right now, the brain is sending you pictures and images and doing all kinds of hard work to get you to do your task. Sometimes in the middle of those pictures, we see a bunch of other pictures and we get distracted. But most of these other pictures or most of the reason why we're getting these this is really all very abstract um, getting all of the all of this excessive attention paid to the eyes is because they have the most happening so while you draw you're also the audience you are participating in the presentation but you're also trying to break down the presentation so you have to choose which one you're going to be. Are you going to be the audience or are you going to be the director? Which one are you going to be? Because you can't be both. Because right now the reason why this failed, why you have a million and one mistakes in this, is because fundamentally you are trying to do both at the same time and it's failing. You're going to have to decide the role you play while you draw. Are you going to be an audience member? If you're going to be an audience member to what entertainment is happening here, then forget about drawing, because you're not going to draw well. You're going to be too distracted by what is being presented over here on the side of the stage. So because you are participating in the entertainment, your response while you draw is focused on the entertainment, which is the focal point. You are the entertainer, so you have to have a responsibility for what really goes into performing this entire scene, not just the friggin' eyes, okay? So when we get rid of this, all right, let's get rid of more detail. Let's get rid of a lot of the detail. What we have left is what you're missing. All right. Why? Why is it so strong? <clears throat> Sorry, my smudge brush is glitchy. So we're gonna get rid of this. Get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this. And that's just gonna get rid of the detail. What remains is what you lost, and what you don't have in your piece. Okay, which is structure, core shadow geometry, light, you're missing all of that. Why? Because you were entertained. Really entertained. You were having a lot of fun drawing what you thought was important because you were there clapping your hands along and having fun looking at the pretty thing about her, which was her eyes. No, that's not, she could have no eyes, she could, she could have no eyes and she'd still be pretty. Why? Because of the way her brow bone is shaped and tilted, the angle of her brow bone, the symmetry of her nose, the shape of her chin and mouth, which is a little bit overbite, the length of her neck. You were focused on all the wrong stuff. This is not your style. You're too young to have a style. You have no business thinking about style. So what is it? It's mistakes. Don't confuse mistake making and habits for style because you don't even have one right now. You're still thinking like uh, a beginner which is rush the good shit and everything else will fall into place. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. The mastery of portraiture comes from the face, not from the, the, the face structure, not from the eyes. All right. This is what we needed to transfer. This is what you should have focused on. And this is what you should have prioritized. This is the important stuff. Because look at how good this still lo it looks like a painting now. Just because we got rid of that stuff. Alright. 
No, smudge isn't glitchy. It's Photoshop. Photoshop has been giving me issues all day. The, the, the XP pen, the XP pen I'm using is phenomenal. It's just plug and play. It's amazing. I've had no driver issues. It's m all Windows. It's all Windows crap. All right. <clears throat> so how do you manage not over depending too much? Well, you could just straight up do this to your reference and work from it and then un you know disable the layer therein and then continue work with the detail once you're done. You can do that. Just so that you don't get distracted with the silliness. What is this? What did it do for your painting? It did nothing. They were wonky drawn spheres for the pupil in the iris. There is no symmetry anywhere. You didn't use any kind of lines to help you find anything. One eye is significantly drooped. The others, the, the, the reference here is perfectly symmetrical. Why, why would you stylize? Therefore, it's a mistake. Why would you stylize with asymmetry? That's dysfunctional. Obviously, it's a mistake. <clears throat> you've, there's too much to learn. There's too much anatomy to capture here for you to attempt to stylize. The nose, you have that perfectly. It's beautifully done. You just need some shade. You also need to have more courage with where the shadows really are. You have some real shadows on the nose. The nose is cartilage. It's hard. It's going to cast strong shadows. It's not see-through. Nothing on the face is that translucent. Maybe the ears are a little bit. So your over, you know, your overrepresentation of the eyebrow hair. This is proof that you were distracted, and and you were a little bit blind as well. So you you saw lines, and then you went back here and did what you remembered. Your reference is right here. Why would you add more lines? You only really have this many. And then there's the fact that you're supposed to be painting like you're looking at someone with the naked eye, not like a camera. Let me give you another visual aid to represent what I mean. Okay, so we're going to... Oh, there's a radial blur. I want to apply filter... Radial blur, it's going to be right here. Cancel. I'm going to move this to the middle. Maybe that'll help. Filter, blur, radial blur. Alright, I don't know why there's no preview for the radial blur. Really, Photoshop? You give us history brush, which deletes instead of painting, but you but you get but you don't give us a preview button for the radial blur. Where's the preview button for the radial? Are you are you freaking kidding me right now, Photoshop? Stupid. Blur. All right, I guess we're gonna be here for another three minutes. my life. Um, <laughs> God, everything sucks today. Nothing is working. Fucking Cyber Monday curse week, Cyber week. Everything is just glitchy. I, that's what it is. That's what it is. It has to be that. My computer crashed like 10 days, four days ago. A blue, my computer blue screened. Can you believe this? Of its own volition. I don't download anything. I don't do anything on my computer other than teach and draw. And it just completely blue screen. Can you believe that? Blur. I'll just use gauge and blur. Okay. So, you're supposed to be painting as if the camera can only see what you see with your individual eye. You can't look at two things at the same time. That's not how it works in the world. You only see one thing at a time. And the one thing that you see is this. All right. But imagine that we, instead of blurring this face, we blurred this. All right. So we're zooming out. We're not providing too much detail as this aid has revealed to us. We're also, because you see now, the only kind of hair you're allowed to have is the lash hair, even then. 
you know, it's not, it's not recommended or required. So you're going to combine this visual aid as the focal point, periphery, like an example for what you're supposed to be seeing. If this, if this had been a model in front of you and not a photograph, because a camera can see way more than a human eye can see. And then we're also combining it with this, which is don't draw the detail right away. Delay the detail, all in all. Capture the structure first. Those two are fundamentals. I just showed you a visual example of two massive fundamentals. All right? Let me put them side by side. Okay? Take a screenshot, throw it in your notes, do what you got to do to remember this. This is what we paint, and this is how we see. How we see, how we paint. All right? When you start actually taking this seriously and respecting this rule, when you actually start respecting this, your work will look much better because it will be approached in a very organized way, and these fundamentals constantly rein you in. You don't get too lost. So this is our reference, and this is in our heads. Let's continue with the paint over. I'm going to blend the crap out of that. <clears throat> Don't need it. Filter, liquefy. Oh, yeah, let me give them a bunch of dumbass features on... Okay. If it starts glitching, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. To make, I've tried everything to stop the jitter for uh, liquefy. So I'm correcting that symmetry. Everything else seems to be okay. It doesn't have to be an exact likeness reproduction. It doesn't have to be an exact reproduction, but we're trying, we're pushing. mostly about the shadows that I want to see. All right, so we are zooming out, which is another massive technique fundamental. So this is all thinking and theory, and this is a technique, zooming out, which has revealed to me that this character, most of her likeness has to do with her eyes being pretty wide apart or most of her character, her, her, what makes this model, this, of this particular beauty. She has a strong chin, and pretty big cheeks, a wide forehead. But again, likeness isn't all of that, but if you ever find yourself working for a project where you have to capture the likeness because it's something requested or required, you're going to have to start um, taking care of that. And look at what happened. We just only got, this is your painting. We only fixed the eyebrows and we only fixed the likeness. So do you see how structured these mistakes that you have are? We can, it's like a layer. I'm just peeling layers of mistakes away. And the result is immediate. Let's backtrack a little. Oh, okay, so we're getting rid of the eyebrows. We got rid of the eyes. We're getting rid of the eyebrows. We've, we corrected likeness. And we already have this much difference. Okay, <clears throat> now as for how not to be scared of how much shadow you're expected to use, um, at one point or another, you're just going to have to try going that dark. You're going to have to not be afraid of it. And of course, magic wand is not enabled. This is so difficult. This is like, why? Okay. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm bringing in 
these patterns of the shadow without being freaked out that I'm painting over a dark spot or something I would have drawn as a line. So if you want a clue as to why you're scared, you'll get more scared of bringing in darker values when you're using those darker values on something like an eyes, nose, and a mouth because those are what you think are most important, but they're not. The most important thing about a painting is the structure, is the light, is the geometry, is the, is the greater structure of the physics in the painting, not the features which don't contain a lot of the physics. They're very small. They're not good examples of shadow. What would be a better uh, a poster child for a shadow? A small object or a large object casting massive shadows? The large object obviously would do a better job at depicting shadows or working to represent what shadows do, especially core shadows. And if I'm here promising you, foaming at the mouth, telling you that you're supposed to brush the, the core shadows only and nothing else, you know, then, then you, you can trust that the core shadows are all you need. And I did not have a new layer because I don't have magic wand and I don't feel like looking for it. So I'm just going to do that instead. <clears throat> so why is it important to show the core shadows? Well, we go back to our form studies. If you do form studies, you learn a new respect for core shadows. You know what I think? I think you guys, because I describe the importance of, of form studies to you, and you acknowledge that form studies are important, you think that's enough and that you don't need to do form studies. There's knowledge involved in, that's hidden in a form study that you don't, that I can't describe to you. I'm only pointing at this form study. I am not actually reading a script or a, or a, or a, a you know, a, yeah, like a script. I'm not reading a script on what you'll experience if you did a form study. If you're being, you know, lazy and self-righteous and saying, well, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard you talk about how important they are, but, you know, I don't need to do them now that I know how important they are. That's crap and your art will suck if you think like that. You have to actually get in there and get mileage in a form study. Okay, so what does a form study do? It teaches you how to behave with your brush. It teaches you how to use your brush. It teaches you to get used to your, your tablet. These are all just like very topical things. It gets you used to your dash, dashboard. It gets you used to the form you're going to have to provide later when you attach the subject to object. And in this case, object is the structure of the head and subject is the face. For any one of you here who is having trouble drawing well, you're rushing the subject and forgetting the object. If you want an actual medicinal remedy for the fact that you're rushing the details and forgetting to think like this and forgetting about this, do a form study because it'll teach you the value of making something look three-dimensional with only two, two dimensions. Just because I pointed at a form study does not mean I've read to you your mileage and I've expedited your mileage. Okay, you have to actually go in there and do it. If you're being one of those people who is rejecting form studies because I describe it and that's you think that's all it takes, then then I then I, I can't help you. Okay? So I'm I need to see you guys do some more form studies. And I'm being rough about this because I have been talking about form studies for like five years. And I've ne and no person in those five years that has picked up form studies has regretted it. And if you're um, uh, having issues with understanding where to put a core shadow or having basic problems, these things I can't fix with a lecture. These things only mileage can fix. All right. So. There's no, there's no vaccination for lack of experience. There's no vaccination for pride. There's no vaccination for, um, you know, that'll, that'll rush your immunity to these issues. You will always have these issues if you don't use the mileage and, and, and get, get that mileage in that form study. All right. A cylinder is a beautiful thing. You have to learn how to paint one. A prism, a cube is a beautiful thing. You have to learn how to paint one in 3D light with only two dimensions. <clears throat> okay, so the core shadows here, we're applying these without fear. 
that rhymed. So there's a lot of stuff you guys could have written back, write some notes. But I am telling you guys the same thing I told you years ago. You will only benefit from form studies. And I do not ever want to see one first or second or third, uh, uh, you know, f referenced piece with eyes in it. You have no business characterizing. If you're trying to get good, and you're trying to get really good, like Titan good, like up there, charging tons of money for your portraits, getting notoriety, getting good, like the real stuff, universal level quality good. The heavy duty stuff that all my students end up drawing like, not mildly talented, not somewhat talented, extremely talented, the scary boot camp good, you have to start increasing your mileage, but also breaking down every single step of your thinking and application. All right. There's radial shading ahead of you, zero radial shading in this piece. We're cracking down on all of your weaknesses and we're bringing them to the light and we're criticizing every single level because you had the reference right beside you. You chose to work with a reference and you rushed all of the wrong thing. You had all of the wrong answers. You did all of the wrong things when working with a reference. If you were trying to actually physically like apply um, your style to a referenced piece and you were half in, half out of a reference, don't present it beside because the viewer, all they're going to see is how you failed with your reference, not what you did right. If you had a side by side of the style you were going for and had your reference, then we could tell whether or not, you know, there was a, an actual theoretical breakdown of a style that you were pursuing. There's a little pocket of fat there. That's what I'm exaggerating. I'm going to straight up smudge everything that you tried to detail around the eyes with a really, really gentle smudge brush, not too hard. My pen pressure is way too hard right now. All right, we don't need any of that detail. All we need is the structure. And you don't have to. You don't have to copy the exact portrait. You can have three portrait references on the side. All right. I'm not anti-vax, you ding dong. <laughs> I'm saying, no, you know exactly what I was saying. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so this is a real problem, the problem I was trying to describe earlier. When some of you sit down, watch a critique hour, and say, I learned. You did learn just by watching, but you didn't learn everything. And there are students who are like this, who think like this, who think that just by hearing how important something is, they are part of the solution. No, you're not. You're still part of the problem. You're not part of the solution yet until you actively do things proactively, move in the direction of a better result. And that's by doing the work. There is no escape from doing the work. Everyone has to have that emotional maturity where they start applying the work. Start applying themselves. How does that change how you are as a person? Well, it makes you respect the work more. It makes you respect quality more gives you a whole different perspective on your priorities and what's important in life. So it's, it's, it's me making a student not think about the glam anymore and start thinking about substance. Maybe the type of people they hang out with will change. Maybe the way they think about what's important in life will change. Maybe they will become a more likable person because they're not only learning how to take criticism, but they've shut down a lot of their pride. A, a lot of pride is, you know, some pride is good, some pride is toxic. You have to learn how to take criticism. There's no way around it. Every religion talks about one big day where we're all going to be criticized. There's no way around it. We're all children. We're all eggs. None of us is right. Not even me. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> okay? To that extent. I don't care. It, 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 I'm, a, it's not, I'm not above the system. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about all of this. Who knows? 
The point is that you are constantly in a point where you are analyzing what you don't know and moving in the direction towards knowledge because you've acknowledged that you don't know everything yet. And the only way to bring in knowledge into your life is to know that you don't have all of it and don't have what you're looking for. So if everyone thinks that, oh, well, I'm just going to cruise by and let the world do its thing. No, it's really not going to be that. You're going to stay mediocre for a long time. There are those of, those of us who want to get good. And I'm not talking about like casual good. I'm talking about type A perfectionist good. I'm talking about the scary amount of mileage ahead of you if you want to get really good. If you're one of those students, this, this particular critique hour was made for you. It's boot camp. It's I don't give a crap about how you feel. If you want to get good, there won't be any more mincing of words. <clears throat> All right, so what am I doing? All radial shading. And I don't think this artist is ever going to be the same again after this class, this particular artist. And it's not to say you guys aren't unique in your mistakes, but we've all seen these mistakes before. We all know what line dependency ends up coming from. Maybe some kind of cartoon, you know, start to your art career. Some kind of anime. The F word of our community. You know, maybe that's where you started off. It's not to say you aren't unique in your situation, but people have faced your challenges before and they've overcome them. Just because you acknowledged form study today does not mean that you have the mileage that a form study would have offered you. Because take a look, zooming out all the way has shown lots of my mistakes. How many mistakes did I make because I didn't zoom out? There is a shadow stretching on the entire outer half of the portrait that we would not have seen until we zoomed out which is what you do when you do a form study. It's constant zoom out assessment of major shapes. Look at that shadow. I'm radially applying it as if I don't care about the portrait and I care about the sphere underneath. It was a big shadow that was missing. We are one step clo closer to advance now because we zoomed out. That simple, that easy. But then again, just because you saw me do it doesn't mean now you have the mileage you need. You have to actually do this yourself to record it and personally record it in your brain. Add it, add it to your software update. Alright, so this big shadow is completely missing in our rendition. And it's so important because it's showing us the roundness of her head in this open space. There is no way out of these form studies. There's no way out of this where you where you get the mileage you need without looking at form studies in this way. And you're just going to have to trust that they will add to the mileage that you're you're trying to add to your greater mileage which is between what's the mileage in between the greater mileage the general mileage in between you and getting good at art. Okay, so, so many changes have been applied already. And let's take a look at where you were before. Really wonky, really heavy duty <coughs> mistake making. But you have a lot of potential because look at the nose you drew. And I don't think you traced because the head is all wonky. I think you really did straight up work from your reference in that way. But as soon as the eyes happened, something went wrong. You started drawing from your symbols. You started drawing from what you think an eye looks like. You started making mistakes. So this needs to stop. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's move on into what we do have to do. So that's the after. Before. Remember the layers? I... I forgot to raise my history stats up to a thousand but remember the layers we peeled we took care of the eyebrows we corrected the likeness we zoomed out we applied core shadows we corrected the symmetry just this alone I know I make stuff look easy but to be honest with you it's because it is easy and the reason why it may seem difficult to you is the same reason why um, Driving for the first time is difficult for someone. 
it's, it's unfamiliar territory. So if things are unfamiliar and that's making your work look bad, even though deep inside you have the skill you actually need or are supposed to have, you're just unfamiliar. Why not get familiar and get rid of all of the distractions so that you can focus on the fundamentals? Because if I smudge her anymore, all we're going to end up with is a big sphere, which is what you were missing to begin with. But want to know why you guys skip it all? Want to know why you guys don't even think about doing form studies? It's because you think it is beneath you. And I am here to completely annihilate your pride. It is not beneath you. It is above you, and you are beneath that. <laughs> that makes no sense. All right. All we see is a form study. There's a very big sphere, some radial shading, and that's that. Hopefully I didn't fuck up the history of it. Damn it. All right. And that's something you didn't see before. So what have we learned? Your pride is not going to raise your mileage. Okay? It's not going to make you better. In fact, it's in the way. Form studies have to actually be done for you to be good at form studies, to be good at forms. Don't be entertained and be a painter at the same time. No, you have to choose one or the other. Either you're the painter or you're the audience. You can't be both at the same time because you're, you're subject to a lot of the distractions because you want to be entertained, so you're going to make choices that are entertaining. You're going to oversaturate. You're going to overdo the contrast. You're going to overdo... Um, the line work or the, or the detail, you're going to rush the small brush, you're going to forget about the large brush. You're going to make mistakes because you're too busy entertaining yourself. And you're too busy being entertained by your reference. Look at what happened when I smudged this eye. I know for sure that we are missing a core shadow on this eyeball. Smudging it revealed the average. Write that back. The average values, which is something you guys don't see because you're blind to it, because it is unfamiliar. Because you don't have, and it's so easy, it's just like five shapes. Really, honestly, it's just three shapes. Cylinder, sphere, and a cube. That's it. Cylinder, sphere, and a cube is the only thing keeping you from drawing advanced work? I wouldn't even... I wouldn't waste any time. As soon as class is done, I'd be on my first. I, I, I'd have a goal of like 50 spheres and 50 different light situations, if that's even uh, applicable. I'd get on some cubes. I'd do some polygons. And then I would do a poly, low poly head. And then I would do... And you, and you think I'm being rough now, and this is exactly what I do with my private students. In private tutoring, this is exactly what everyone goes through. I, and I ask every single one of my students, what is it that you want to accomplish where do you want to go as soon as they say the word 3d make my work more look more 3d as soon as they say make things look realistic my lighting is off my textures are off this they instantly and every single student has form studies but they instantly get a, like a, a massive regimen of form studies to do you see too much information and art is about breaking down information and reapplying it so that you have a realistic painting. You are overthinking and form studies sl slow and organize your thinking. So this, this boot camp critique hour, if, if you think this boot camp critique hour is going to provide you with the knowledge that you need, that you would get that immeasurable, valuable knowledge of 50 form studies from now, that person you're going to be after 50 form studies from now, if you think that's all you need to do is watch a, a critique hour and that you're good, it is, that's just ridiculous. All right? Imagine how good you're going to draw 50 form studies from now. How much of that hidden knowledge that you wouldn't have known unless you did it. Oh, I didn't know I do this with my brush. Oh, I didn't know this is what you're supposed to do. Oh, I guess I've been using my brush too heavy. Oh, this is like actually really subtle. The first brush stroke of a radial shade is actually invisible, but it's so important. These are the minor little details that you pick up. Oh my God, I've been actually zooming in this whole time way too early. Oh my gosh, I, can, I need to zoom out all the way for me to really be able to see it. Hopefully, you know, five, seven, four studies from now, I don't need to zoom out so far, but I'm still going to. 
All right, so this isn't a how-to form study. I'm not going to get into form studies. I've done so many videos so far on form studies. Like, they're, they're just, all, like, everywhere. Like, I have form studies everywhere on my channel. Let's, uh, let's do a search together so you guys can find them. This is about why form studies are important. So you just have to do a search. Lighting is one of the most um, important to topics. And this one, how to paint with a light source, is one that I use as an intro class just to get people used to my terminology. But this is a very, very important class to watch because it talks about the technique of a form study. And these are all my personal form studies from years ago. This is five years ago, so it's proof that I've been talking about form studies five friggin' years. And then just Google, I mean, not Google, search the word form study. What the hell? Form study. Oh my god, photo. Well, I mean, YouTube. Form study. Okay, <clears throat> so many. They don't stop. You have radial form studies, which are blobs, which are so important because they're the final, they're part of the final presentation. The final draft has gradients in it, but you have to do the right kind of gradient, which is a radiation from the darkest, deepest point of a form to the highest peak of a form. Values radiate. They don't just travel linearly left to right dark to light gradients. They're actually very three-dimensional shades. Learning how to trust a single plate of a, of, a, of, a, of a surface to have one single value and have more organized, less blotchy paintwork is what you benefit from when you do a, a geometric form study, a polygon. All of this is available here. So if you don't know how to start a form study, do a search. So you can actually technically get started. But for the fact, for those of you who have been skipping your form studies and have art that looks like this, and think that, you know, you just, you just in time, you'll pick it up. Yeah, in 10 years, you'll pick it up. Why not in three months? Why would you not do it in three months if you, if you, if you have to do, like, why would you not do that? If you can do it in three months, why would you not opt for that? And I would, I would even suggest less than three months. Okay, because when you start looking at the world as a form study, as a simple breakdown, you start to mechanically break things down like, a, like an engineer. You start to break down big pieces and then you end up painting big illustrations and they never scare you. Big illustrations can't scare you. It's just a bunch of tiny form studies you'll tell yourself. Breaking things, learning the blocks is how you end up building something big. And for those of you who are under pressure to perform creatively, a form study is a perfect alternative and removes all creative pressure. Write that back. Okay, so I, I hope this boot camp today inspired. I'm sorry if, if it's too rough. I'm actually not sorry. I'm happy it's too rough because this is the moment where your life changed forever. After today, you're never going to do this again. This is the moment where you start painting better in your life today changed you. You are no longer the same person. This artist and everyone listening. <clears throat> Don't undervalue form studies because they, are, they seem beneath you or they're too simple or they're too simple a subject or some ridiculous alternative or, or, or version of that. Yeah. Form study removes creative pressure. Replaces creative pressure with technical mileage, with actual mileage, with repeated skill. How many of you here have that inner demon that whispers in your ear and says, hey, this painting was an accident. Oh, this looked good today. Tomorrow you'll draw something. It'll suck. How do you get to the point, and that demon's right, how do you get to the point where that demon no longer can say shit to you? How do you get to the point where that demon no longer can say, this is an accident, This you cannot repeat the success? when you actually have the technical tool, that perfect awareness, that, that, that skill from control, being able to control an edge, to know what an edge is, to apply the gradient, to, to know what the shape is, to know the outline, to be aware of the anatomy. And by the way, anatomy doesn't have to be act, actively studied. It can be passively picked up. It's more important to rush 3D knowledge and 3D application on 2D medium than anatomy knowledge and medical diagrams of muscles. That's that's a ridiculous waste of time. If you're at a point where you just want to 
know in peace of mind, know that you are still learning how to draw. Form studies are what you're supposed to do. Oh, I don't know how to draw, so I'm just going to memorize a bunch of muscles. Waste of time. <clears throat> form study February. One form study every day for the month to get people to actually start doing them. That is an amazing idea, Benjamin. <clears throat> Okay, let's do form study February. So, Maud, please uh, copy paste that for me. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> that was a really good idea. Tilzo, Ben, please no, because she will literally do <laughs> this. Art's done. <laughs> okay, boot camp. Okay, cadets. <laughs> Is that right? Is it cadets? It's Drill Sergeant Istabrak has officially um, left the building. We can all relax now. We can unclench. And um, all I can say is that in this upcoming year, if you want to be an improved version of yourself, 2020, next year, today, 2020, you, like this day, 2020, you, you have to start taking real steps. And I'm not saying this abstract. It's not just a 15-minute TED Talk. It's not a five-minute art improvement video. This I actually gave you the, the thing you're supposed to do, the, the proactive step. Like I actually described, I actually wrote down a medicine on a prescription paper. Like I actually did that. Yeah, maggots or cadets. Okay. <laughs> All right, so so you, I actually told you what you need to do in the next couple months in order to be a better artist, period. It's not theoretical. It's not in, up in the air what you got to do. Y you have actually been told what you need to do. This artist and every other artist sitting here. And if you want to get good, and I'm not talking, again, I want to repeat this. I'm talking about the real good. I'm talking about people see your portfolio and they go, holy wow, holy crap. This person can draw. I'm talking about that good. All right? And that's what all my students end up drawing like. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you're type Bs, you finish and leave my classes, you graduate my class of type A. <clears throat> and not, not to say type B and type A are different, but when it comes to the amount of work, art is really hard to do. So I at least want you guys to be type A when it comes to art. You can be type B everywhere else. You can go do your hippie dance in the field of flowers. Go ahead. But when you're in my classes, you need to be type A because the amount of work ahead of you is insurmountable. It may, it looks like it's insurmountable. The, 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 the cliff ahead of you is, looks unclimbable. And that's why a lot of people quit art. A, a lot of students quit art and they do something else. So... Don't get overwhelmed, but at the same time, be aware of the work ahead of you. It's wisdom and patience required to be a student. All right. <clears throat> okay. So good luck with all of your work. Thank you, everyone, for coming to today's stream. I'm sorry about my absences last week before, after. <clears throat> I talked to you through every single change that I did, and I broke down the fundamentals into visuals. This isn't magic. Everything that was done today was done with your surveillance with you guys watching so you, you can repeat this the artist here who wants to do this correction you can repeat this and that's something i make all of my private students do corrections they are always they're mandatory and they are the first thing on the list and any students of mine here or currently watching can attest to this corrections are absolutely mandatory you have to go back and beat the crap out of your drawing just as well as i did okay because it's a chance to solidify the information you learned today so the student who did that piece that i looked at the maggot who looked at that piece that i looked at did that piece that i looked at you have to actually repeat what i did today all right go through every single step slow down mute the the video if you have to just repeat what i do and understand why i did do it all right for um some exit announcements go to istabrak.com to join us if you want your work beaten up like i did today um, and you want to submit it to Reddit, just click on the Reddit icon at isterback.com, post your work here. Lots of students are, are, um, putting their lives on the line, posting things on this Reddit. Courageous, beautiful students who are studying every single day to become better and better artists. Again, to be able to tell that story that's in their head. Art is a technology that technology itself has not 
beaten because there is no technology to take a photo of what's in your mind other than art itself. <clears throat> art is the one thing technology hasn't superseded its own thing. All right, that's a really clumsy way of putting it, but I hope you got the picture. No pun intended. Um, to get announcements and all that, please join me on Instagram, on Twitter. I have a Snapchat. I'll put it up here soon. Um, and Facebook, I announce for these all the time. Portrait Studio will be on sale in two to three weeks. Again, 50% off. Um, it'll run into uh, the <clears throat> start of the year. Portrait Studio is an amazing way to start thinking about your forms. Uh, it has a low poly model that... Um, for portrait artists helps you master the lighting before doing anything else so that's that low poly model for the portrait you have control over the light and the camera in portrait studio so if you want to improve your work in that regard and actually build a reference and look at the way the light animates in front of you because it's very different seeing a reference and then being able not being able to control the light and then opening up portrait studio and opening up the low poly model of the of the portrait male or female and moving the light around you actually start to record frames in your brain and your memory of those lights in that form remember every form study eventually becomes a face but there are steps in between and portrait studio can help guide you through all of that if you're interested in that for the new year's resolutions for anyone like that the portrait studio will be on sale for the first um by the first of the of the new year and announcements, last announcements. If you go to the Reddit, you can also um, catch up on information on the holiday challenges. Honestly, this is the last day where you have enough time. Any day after, like this week, you're not going to have enough time to do either. So last call for challenges, basically. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Um, God willing, if I don't get sick. Bye, everyone.